Good morning, Grace friends. How are you today? We're now several, many, 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 many days. It's only been a week, right? But still, several days into uh, what's going on with the uh, pandemic. And so I'm curious to know how you're doing, how you're faring. I wonder how many of you are feeling like you go through your days and at the end you haven't had a moment to think or take a breath or uh, just uh, consider uh, all that's kind of going on around you. This is totally normal, uh, but it's certainly an effect of going through something like a pandemic. So please know that you are not alone. Let me say this again, you are not alone. I'll get more into that in just a few minutes. But I want to give you some uh, updates, the latest information. Uh, if we were on TV, it would say Grace Lutheran Church Special Bulletin or something. Starting uh, next, next week, um, the church will be on, the building itself will be on lockdown. And what that means is that all of your staff, the building will be locked, but the staff will be working uh, remotely. Uh, if you have a need, what you can do is call the church number 320-679-1062. And during the day, that phone call will be routed to uh, Leah's cell phone. And at night, uh, it will be routed to my cell phone. This is true. Uh, week or weekend, no matter the hour, uh, you will be, uh, um, your call will be taken and uh, we'll be able to have conversation. And if there are ways that we can uh, walk alongside of you, of course we will. Um, I also wanted to say that uh, starting, so this coming Sunday, uh, at 8 a.m. I will be on live Facebook live and I'll do a condensed service the plan right now is that my five-year-old is going to sing this little light of mine we'll see if she actually does it but I think it'll probably happen and my wife will be taking part a little bit in the service but I'll be preaching and leading worship a condensed service because uh, people's attention spans are not so much, especially online. So please know that I will be here then. And starting next week, Mondays and Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m., I will be uh, doing a Facebook Live on Mondays. I will do just some announcements if there are any, but then connecting and then um, doing a brief message on Wednesdays um, at 1.30, I'll be on again. And in that time, um, I'll do a little a longer sermon. That will be the Lenten midweek uh, sermon. And I'll do a little uh, condensed worship with that as well. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, the plan is to um, have Kelly do a children's message. Uh, we're still working some of the details out on that, so um, we will keep you posted on how that's going to work. Uh, when I'm with you on Monday, I'm assuming I'll have uh, greater detail for you on that. Confirmation students, the plan is that we would meet with you probably on Wednesday night um, over Zoom and or uh, Facebook Live. So be aware of that as well. All the details are sort of forthcoming. Uh, last night we had a meeting here, well on Zoom, I was here, I was sitting right where I'm sitting now. Um, had a meeting over Zoom with people from council, from your personnel team, from your finance team, personnel, finance, and uh, one other team, oh, I can read it, wait. Uh, finance personnel and, oh yeah, the staff. <laughs> and um, 
in this meeting we kind of talked about uh, this plan going forward. It's possible given the CDC recommendations that nothing as we have known it uh, will probably take place in the same way this year, including maybe Holy Week and Easter Sunday. So um, we will still be live on Facebook, but uh, it might be that because of the recommendations, um, we're just going to be doing things a little differently. Please stay tuned. And um, uh, know that uh, your staff, your council, your personnel, your finance team, really uh, everyone, uh, uh, worship and music team, all of us are deeply um, committed to caring about and for you and praying with and for you in this time. I think that's what I want to say for now. I think that's what I want to say for now about all of these things. So before I move into the message, I'd like you to take just a, a moment and do this with me. It seems strange, but it, it's good. Hold it and let it out. Again, deep breath. Hold it, let it out. I invite you to stop and do that several times a day as things come flying at us in quick uh, and crazy uh, times to just take a moment to take a breath and do one more thing. Stretch out your arms either up or out these things are helpful as well. So to get us into the message, small message I'm going to do uh, with you today, I wanted to read for you a poem that I um, have come to really love, uh, especially in this time. It's called Praise the Rain, and it's written by poet uh, Joy Harjo. Praise the rain, the seagull dive, the curl of plant, the raven talk. Praise the hurt, the house slack, the stand of trees, the dignity. Praise the dark, the moon cradle, the sky fall, the bear sleep. Praise the mist, the warrior name, the earth eclipse, the fired leap. Praise the backwards, upward sky, the baby cry, the spirit food. Praise canoe, the fish rush, the hole for frog, the upside down. Praise the day, the cloud cup, the mind flat, forget it all. Praise crazy, praise sad, praise the path on which we're led, praise the roads on earth and water, praise the eater and the eaten, praise beginnings, praise the end, praise the song and praise the singer. Praise the rain, it brings more rain. Praise the rain, it brings more rain. In the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, Jesus begins his farewell tour, by which I mean he's saying goodbye to everybody and everything before his crucifixion. And undoubtedly and understandably the disciples each and every one of them and each and every person to whom he says goodbye and responds with a bit of confusion and 
it feels like they misheard him or misunderstood him or maybe Jesus maybe Jesus was just out of his mind that day it happens things happen like that and yet Jesus says that he is going to die and to be raised from the dead but when you hear shocking news uh, when you are about to enter uncharted territory you might not hear the second part of that if you're the receiver of those words Jesus promises many things in this chapter chapter 14 of John's Gospel one of the things he promises is this I will not leave you orphaned again I will not leave you orphaned I read about uh, I wrote about this in the local Mora Times for this week um, and if you want to read 500 words of what I have to say about that please do so and I hope you will and I hope you'll share it with those uh, who, in your lives who might want to might want or might need these um, but who may not be in this area or might be in the area but don't receive the paper uh, but I wanted to spend a few minutes with you to think about what what might it mean for us to follow one who makes such a promise what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus when Jesus says he will not leave us orphaned I suppose in some ways it um, brings an immense amount of relief just an immense amount of relief on the other side of it uh, there's still a lot of fear a lot of uncertainty overwhelmed and maybe you can understand all that maybe in that chapter it feels maybe like this week did like it like it just was so bizarre they felt like they they were kind of outside themselves maybe you're there too with the original disciples I will not leave you orphaned is a word that comes to us from our Lord as one who has walked alongside of us one who has named us and claimed us in the waters of baptism one who has promised that come hell or high water come pandemic um, or everything closed down come all of that Jesus is still with us Jesus is still with you it's been fun to watch uh, my daughter kind of come into uh, the English language over the course of the last year and a half and to not only figure out what words mean but also how words feel in her mouth and so it is often the case even still if we say a word or a phrase or a sentence that uh, seems strange to her she will repeat it pardon me for just a second I'm, I apologize so she'll repeat it um, and that's been true really since day one of her speaking English until even up through now so maybe one of the ways we approach these words from Jesus is the way my daughter approaches words that seem strange or new or confusing um, let's keep them in our mouths let's keep them in our hearts and our heads and our bodies and lives for sure but let's keep them in our mouths uh, a poet that I really appreciate Padre Gotuma he um, he says that sometimes when he's riding on the train and he's reading poetry maybe that he has written or somebody else has written sometimes he finds 
that he needs to read it out loud uh, quietly on the train maybe but he needs to hear it um, kind of bubble up inside of him and hear the the sound that the words make against the clatter of the tracks and the train against the clatter that is going on inside of him so Here's your practice for today. Not that you were looking for what you do, but maybe this is something you do as you do everything else. Just this phrase, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you orphaned. Again and again throughout the day, carry that with you. And for those whom you meet, for whom the news of the pandemic and all that's going on with everything shutting down for a time that we don't, whose length we do not know. Um, maybe the work here is to just say, I will not leave you orphaned. This week, though the church is in lockdown, we are reachable. And when the council and I reconvene over Zoom on uh, Monday, March 30th, we'll consider uh, how we'll proceed from there. Taking seriously again, of course, the recommendations by the CDC and the governor and all the rest it's easy to feel isolated and understandable to feel isolated amidst all of this. Even if your life is full and, and amazing, it can still uh, feel a bit um, difficult. Social distancing, though, does not mean social disengagement. There are many ways for us to engage with one another. Maybe one of the things, one of the ways we do that is to announce to our communities, I will not leave you orphaned. I'm so grateful for all of you, for the ways that we walk together as church and for the ways that we're walking together in this time, in this difficult time. Please continue to keep us, your staff and and counsel and teams in your prayers. Please continue to um, support the ministry that we're doing in Christ's name through your financial gifts, which can be uh, sent to us by snail mail or also electronically. Please walk alongside of us as we walk alongside you, as together in Christ we walk alongside the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, um, this pandemic is feeling more like a lifestyle instead of a moment, more like a winter instead of a snowstorm. Help us, O oh God, to know your presence, to rest in your promises, especially this one today, I will not leave you orphaned. Help us, God, to live this this, I will not leave you orphaned in the ways that we can by calling, writing, emailing, Facebooking, FaceTiming, um, card writing, praying. God, thank you for the ways that you have given us to engage one another, even when it's not face to face. Help us to not only know your presence and love, but also your strength and your encouragement and your peace as we deal with things we do not fully understand. Continue to lead and guide, love and support us for the sake of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, I'll see you Sunday morning. And I know that, um, that you are held in hands of love. God's love, for which there is nothing stronger. God bless you. Bye-bye.